Hello, my beautiful stack of steaming hotcakes. I just want to show you what I'm going to make in this video. This was my first time using primary elements, and I am in love. They are sexy, seductive, sparkly, just everything that an artist wants when creating an acrylic pour. I was really, really happy with them. And the way you mix them up is so much easier than the regular colors. So pay attention for that. And uh, I want to do my paint it forward shout out before I forget. In today's video, I am going to shout out Angela from Angela La Art. I'm going to link that below. She's just starting out. She's a beautiful woman. So upbeat and just a sparkly personality. So give her a shot. Check her out. If you want to uh, take part in the Paint It Forward campaign, all you have to do is shout out another channel that you feel deserves to be seen, uh, that could use the help, somebody that inspires you, and um, let them know you did it. And then hopefully they'll do it for you also. And um, up in the title of your video, after you type in your title, if you can just put the hashtag paint it forward 2019 in there it will show up in blue and this way anybody that clicks on that link or actually searches hashtag paint it forward 2019 on youtube all of these videos that have that hashtag will pop up so if you can remember to do that that would be great if not no biggie just trying to help everyone succeed. I hope you guys are all having a great day and enjoy the video. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So tonight for the first time ever for me and on this channel, I am going to be using primary elements. What are primary elements you ask? Well, primary elements are the acrylic version of resin art colors so here you go all right acrylic resin so what this is is this is a dry paint system it's very simple to use you take a little bit of this you mix it into a liquid that I'm going to show you in a minute and you make your own paints you could probably mix and match them. I'm going to try to do that. Uh, blend a couple together, make your own fancy shades and they're water soluble. So if you added a little gum Arabic to them, you would have watercolors. Uh, I've used these with just put a little bit in a cup, dampen a paintbrush, get a little bit of the powder on a paintbrush, and I've had texture on a canvas that I painted with these to give a beautiful, you know, color, sparkle, etc. And then the great thing is, is because they're water soluble, you can resin over them without having to seal them because resin is solvent based. These are water based. You can use these to glaze. You could put them in polyurethane, varnish, um... It, it, so many things, scrapbooking, just tons of things, but we're going to stick to the, the acrylic side for tonight, paint pouring. So how do you mix these? What Color Art has is a product called Polypore. Now this is not just a pouring medium. This is your everything. Okay. So what I mean by that is when we mix our paints for pouring, we usually add a little Floetrol, a little pouring medium, some water, some glue, the kitchen sink, whatever you could think of. And then we get it to the right consistency and then we pour. Well, with this stuff, this plus a little bit of this and you're done. The consistency, which I will show you, is perfect for paint pouring now if you're going to do a, a special like a, a dutch pour where you have to move the paint with the blow dryer 
then you may have a have to add a little tiny bit of water to thin it out but as far as your swipes your regular pours this is the perfect consistency and actually leslie has a channel which i always mention and it's linked below she's the the mix master extraordinaire for color art she creates all these beautiful products for us she has a lot of videos on this and different ways to use it so make sure you check out her channel and um she goes way more into depth about it but as you can see the consistency is perfect okay it, it's exactly how you want it i will get a stick and show you on the stick okay one nice steady stream perfect so as I was saying before, this is your all-in-one, great for beginning pourers that just want to get used to doing it. If you don't want to make your own custom blends, I mean, it, it's really primo stuff and it dries super quick too. I, I have a very cold room where I put my uh, acrylic pours. Unfortunately, I have to put them there to dry because it's the only spot I have and literally i'll put it in it's almost midnight right now by nine ten o'clock tomorrow it'll be dry almost so it dries really quick just like liquitex pouring medium does the same thing but it doesn't have liquitex doesn't have all the ingredients that this has with liquitex um i end up adding some other things to get the consistency right but anyway so I know I'm going to get asked this, so I'm going to address it right now. You cannot use these in resin, okay? So you see here, this is jasmine, this is wild jasmine, this is acrylic, this is the resin. A few of these, the lighter pastel shades, you will be able to get them to mix into resin, but a majority of these colors if you try them in resin, will gum up on you and give you problems. So my suggestion is if you want to do resin, resin art, if you want to do the acrylic, primary elements. Good news is, is I have a code in the bottom of this video, and I will put it in any video that I use these products for. And this goes for resin art pigments also. There's going to be a code in the bottom, which entitles you to $30 off an $80 order. That is extraordinarily generous of Leslie. And this is why I love this woman, because she really does this for the love of art. So let me mix up some of these colors with you really quick. So I already have my pouring medium in here. So per the directions of the poly pour, you are to use an eighth to a quarter of a teaspoon of primary elements to one ounce of the polypore. So I do not have a teaspoon here, of course, when I need one, but I do know that these little tiny ones are an eighth of a teaspoon and that's only a half an ounce. So I'm just going to put one of these in, okay, which is probably way too much, but I'm too lazy to go to the kitchen and get a teaspoon, guys. My suggestion with any type of product that you use is always start with less and add until you get where you need to be. And in theory, that that's not in theory, but that is the best way to do it. You cannot take color out. You can add it, but you can't take it out. And why waste it if you don't need it? Okay, so we have a nice lilac-y, bluish, these are all shimmer colors, by the way, all of them. 
So I'm going to add a little more of the polypore to that because I don't think I'm going to have enough to do this whole canvas. So now I have an ounce that I just added in there, a total ounce. Let me mix this through and see if that was indeed enough color. And indeed it was. Look at that. So you really don't need much of this stuff. Little goes a long way. So now here is, look at that consistency. Let me make sure you're seeing that. It is perfect. Okay. You can kind of see the shimmer there. I have got to get my butt to Walmart and get another white light in here. All right, so that one is done. So now, um, the next one I'm going to show you is called Snapdragon. I'm going to mix a little bit more of this one because I do need to cover this entire canvas. Okay. Uh, doo -doo -doo. And I really, really, really need to stop putting my colors in the cup over my canvas. I do that all the time and then it causes problems. Now this time it won't because I'm doing a swipe, but if I wanted to have a nice clear white background, I would not now because I just did that. So here is this one. I might have to add, no, actually I don't. Thought maybe I was gonna have to add more color, but you, know, you gotta mix them up, but there's nowhere near as much mixing as when you mix normal colors. Not normal colors, you know, Floetrol and glue and all that. Now you can use silicone in these. Use them just like any other paint. Basically what you're doing is you're making your own bottle of paint here. Okay, beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous color. Okay, so we have those two done. And then going to do a little bit of the golden diamond. And I almost did it again. Let me get this canvas out of here. So I have... As I said, I have Leslie's channel link. I'm going to have the code down there, and I will also have the store. Um, it's not under the materials. It's right when the description of my video, right where you start reading, it's a couple of links down. You'll see it. It's called colorart.com. And remember, this is a mica, so until you get it down in there and mixed up a little bit, then you could start beating the crap out of it, but you don't want it to poof up back at you.
This is the golden diamond. It's a beautiful, it's very pale, but it, the shimmer on the canvas from this stuff is amazing. Now, there is one product that you can use uh, both in resin and with this polypore, and that is the Blingit line, the Blingit products. Those will incorporate into either resin or this polypore. But other than that, they need to be kept separate. And I think I wanted to do the wild jasmine. Why not? It's my favorite, favorite color of all time. I have like five bottles of the res. No, I got like, I'm down to three bottles of it in the resin art. And I just got this bottle. So. Leslie, I know you'll watch this. Please do not ever retire this color. Please. All right. I'm going to be doing some really cool projects um, coming up with these paints this week. I have some beautiful uh, glass ornaments that I'm going to be showing you guys. Some beautiful, just for you, glitters. Oh, I have so much to do. And I cannot wait. It's been a hell of a week for me. All right, so now we're down to our base, our swiping color. So for that, I'm just going to use regular paint because we do not have a white or a black in this line. She does, however, have, I believe, in the vivid uh, enamel line. I'm not sure if that... She has a few other products. You can look on this site. I think in that line, she does have a black and a white. Um, I, don't quote me on that, though. But I'm going to mix up my own black and my own white. Well, my own black right now because we're going to do black over these colors to make sure that they're, they pop like they should. All right, so... I'm going to be using Liquitex Basics for my black. Now, of course, you never ever remember to get the little piece of crust out of there. I think a piece of it just fell in my cup. Let me get this off of here. Right. So now for this, I think I'm going to just use Liquitex pouring medium and maybe a little tiny bit of Floetrol. Just want to make sure there was nothing in there. So this is the Liquitex pouring medium. This is, what size is this? Nine hundred and forty-six milliliters. Of course, it can't just say. Oh, it's thirty-two ounces. So here, I'll put. I'll 
probably uh, almost as much of that as I did paint. And for the hell of it, I'm going to add just a little tiny bit of Floetrol. Right. We're going to give that a stir around. You'll see now, too, that I forgot I had the tripod on the table. Sorry, guys. Um, you'll see how much you have to whip this around now to get it the right consistency. It's way too thick. So now here comes all the water. I'm doing this in real time just so you could see what it takes. All right, and then we have to scrape the stick. This kills my hands. That's why I love that polypore. All right, it's still a little thick. It's creating a mound on top when I let it drip. So. creates a mound it is still too thick if it pours down and creates a hole in the paint like when it's pouring it creates a hole then it's too thin so you want it to hit the surface when you pull the stick out and you tilt it like this you want it to hit the surface and spread out So now this feels pretty good, okay? And that's just a small cup. Now, if I was doing a large canvas, it'd take me, you know, five to eight minutes to mix one color. And then when you're doing, you know, seven, eight colors, it's a pretty big pain. So I have to put my silicone in. Let me use, what do I wanna use here? Let's use treadmill tonight 100% silicone so I'm not going to put it in every color I think what I'm going to do is put it in the uh, stargazer And then I will also put it in the Snapdragon that's over here. Oh, hell, put one in here. None in the gold. That was actually too Tammy. <laughs> All right, so if you want big, juicy cells, only a couple of swirls like I just did. If you want them tiny, Mix it in really good. Okay. I didn't put any in the gold. And the Snapdragon, I did. There's a couple of swirls there. That's it. All right, we're ready to go. 
So I have my canvas here. I have some little tacks on the back. Usually I tape them to keep them nice and clean, but this is just for demonstration purposes. So I did not. So I'm just gonna put a pair of gloves on. And we are gonna do this. I hope I mixed enough paint. All right, so I'm going to start with the jasmine, and I'm going to just kind of pour it. Here. What I do is I do one color at a time. You could do it however you want to do it. You could do it one color at a time like this. Or you could go back and forth between colors. Maybe zigzag them, whatever you want to your painting. Have fun with it. All right, I'll save a little bit of that for after. All right, and now I have the Snapdragon. I'll go back in and fill those holes before I swipe it. All right, so now I have the Stargazer. I should have mixed up a, uh, wasn't even thinking, maybe I will, um, a matte color besides the black. It helps to have, even when you do resin art, it helps to have a matte color to balance things out. If you do all sparkle or shimmer colors, it, it gets overbearing. That's why a lot of people like to add white or black because it's just too much shimmer. All right, so here is, let me use the rest of these first. And then maybe I will add a flat color or matte color.
Okay. They still have the gold too. But I don't want to rely. Oh, let, let me see what I have going on here before I run my mouth. Let me tilt it around a little bit. I don't want to overdo it with the paint. And I could always put a little tiny bit of black in between. Right. All right, I'm just going to use the black to fill in what I need to fill in. Now there's no silicone in the black at all. Might as well use it because I'm not going to use it for anything else. I'm going to go right down the sides here. Now, I know that's not typically how you do your swipe, but this is how we're doing it today. <laughs> All right, so now it's time to swipe. Oh, I'm gonna grab a piece of Yupo. Yippa Yupo. Some people cringe seeing people use Yupo, but it's reusable. Now, I haven't done a swipe in years. 
so it's way too touching way too much this piece is way too big <laughs> but you do get the gist I'm sure let me let me cut the supo <laughs> Look at those cells, guys. Look at them come. And I haven't even gotten to the other parts yet. This Yupo paper, you could wash it off in the sink. It's plastic. It's almost like plastic. It's some type of a plastic. Put it that way. And you can literally wipe it off and wash it in the sink. It'll dry. You can reuse it. All right. So now. I don't even know if I want to. Oh, I kind of have to. Let me just add a little more black over here. I went down. I pressed down too hard with the paper over here. That's why you see the canvas. How fun is that, huh? That is yummy. Yummy, yummy. I'm going to add a little black right here. Just like this. Why not? And I'm not going to touch these spots here. I'm going to let this... Uh, do its thing. Put my gloves on so I can tilt it. Those are some big, big cells. Color inside of color inside of color. Oh. See how big we can get these babies. Now, granted, I did a horrible swipe, but you get the gist. It's very psychedelic looking. Can't wait to show you these cells, what they look like inside. Oh, I'm going to leave this just like this. I may be able to do something with this for my daughter's room. What I will do is just fix these little sides and... Uh, bare spots. Just add a little bit of black paint. This is very cool. And we got some ghost uh, lacing over here.
Very, very cool. All right, I'm going to torch it one more time and give you guys a close-up. I won't bore you with watching me clean up the sides. So I will show you it like this and then I'll put the flash on the camera. Now, granted, if I had done a better swipe, it would have been uh, pretty awesome. All right, so let me show you now with the flash on. All right, I have you in the dark, nothing but the flash. They're just so random, those big ones. I freaking love them. I like that corner a lot. All right, well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Primary elements. What do you think? Let me know below. And uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and do not forget about that code. Telling you these are a hit. Wowie. I tip my hat to you, Miss Leslie Onstat, again. And I also curse you because now there goes all the money in my wallet. <laughs> wow, look at that area, how it's developing. Holy cow. That is cool. That's going to make an amazing backdrop for something. All right, guys. I hope you all enjoyed this. If you have any questions, leave them below. And as always, happy pouring.